Hi there, Joshua Hamlin here at Bricks Cascade 2019, and I am joined by Boone Langston, who many of you might recognize from numerous uh, videos here at Beyond the Brick. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And today we're talking about Boone's amazing Lego fire truck that he has here, and this is on the AFOL Designer program on BrickLink.com right now, so you can check this out if you want to support it. So we're going to get all of Boone's insights into this design, as well as his extra special design that he has here as well, the Star Wars version. So if you want to start off with the original fire truck design, Boone, and just give us kind of the background to that and what inspired you to submit this for the program. Yeah, absolutely. So I went to a meeting at BrickCon in October of 2018. It was a couple weeks into there were there were eight weeks to submit designs to this program at Bricklink and basically the the gist of it was you know we could submit designs and and some of these designs would be selected and crowdfunded and go on to be produced as as uh, you know limited edition sets uh, that could be purchased through Bricklink and so I went to this meeting and they kind of explained the whole program and I left that weekend being really fired up no pun intended uh, to to submit something for the for the program and. Um, I didn't have any ideas. I knew I wanted to submit something and I just, I didn't have any ideas. And about a week later, I was up at my wife's grandfather's house. He uh, passed just about a year and a half ago and he was the fire commissioner uh, in his town. And uh, so there was, you know, numerous pieces of fire department memorabilia in his home. And so when we were kind of up there on vacation, I looked around and I, I saw actually this wooden antique fire engine model that I had made for him a number of years before he passed and I thought you know what okay it's time for me to do uh, do this in Lego and I didn't know if it was the idea that I would stick with I didn't know if it was the best idea but I just knew it was an idea that I could run with and so I started and I thought this is the idea that's gonna get me going and in the end I you know I spent about three and a half weeks designing it in Bricklink's uh, studio program and at the end of that three and a half weeks I was finally you know, had something that I was pretty happy with, and I submitted to submitted it to the program, uh, and then I was accepted. So this this is not any particular fire engine. It's based on you know it has details that are kind of inspired by a number of different fire engines. It definitely just kind of by the styling should be from around 1910. Um, you know, you there may be some fire engines out there that you find that have very similar stylings to these. But really, what I was doing is I, I started with the elements, you know, and I looked at the elements. What elements do I have available to me, and uh, and and what kinds of you know what kinds of features, what kinds of visual features were in these fire engines around about 10 years after the turn of the century, and um, and I just kind of you know went back and forth between what parts do I have available. What do I want it to look like? And, and this is what I landed on. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'll open up the engine compartment. This is one of the kind of one of the play features here is uh, you can open the engine compartment and you can see the, the four cylinder engine in there that, you know, is also kind of stylized after uh, an engine from around 1910. I'm going to open up the other side too because I actually think the other side looks cooler. And this is actually one of my. One of my favorite views of this model is, uh, you know, kind of like the exhaust manifold over there, and I just think that's neat. And and one of the things about this, I think the engine is a really significant part of the build experience because you get to build the entire engine of the vehicle as, you know, you've built the chassis, you've built part of the engine compartment, and then there's several pages in the instruction manual uh, where you get to build the engine, you know, as it its own complete submodel, and then you kind of drop the engine into the the engine compartment you know exactly the way that you know you would drop the engine into a vehicle on the assembly line so I think that's kind of a neat part of the build process um, the here I'll turn it around here the ladder of course is able to come off the side of the uh, fire engine here and um, I think that's kind of a fun little piece of the build too and you can manipulate that. We've got down here a fire extinguisher that can come off and you can sort of, you know, aim that where you want it to go. And then uh, if you get the tension just right on this little overhead beam here, you can uh, ring the bell back and forth and it doesn't make any sound, but it does uh, do a nice little sort of bell motion there. 
Um, I guess like one of the other things that I think is kind of fun is uh, on the, the tank here underneath the seat. This uses like genie lamps and I kind of intend that to be sort of like a faucet, like a handle and a nozzle. Um, but I think the genie lamp is sort of a fun little parts usage there. So something interesting with, with this model and I think all of the, the ADP models was they were built digitally and so you didn't actually physically build this before you submitted it, right? It was all digital? That's correct. There is, you know, a couple things about that. Studio software has built into it a stability test. And so you're able to use that and kind of see how stable it was. You know, they told us not to let the stability issues in studio prevent us from submitting. They're like, you know, submit anyway, because I, I think they would help us redesign a little, you know, little things here and there to help with stability. Um, but then the other thing, you know, I, I think building digitally, if you've had years and years of experience um, building with physical bricks, you know, you have an intuition, at least this is my experience, I feel like there's an intuition that comes along with experience in building with bricks that translates to building digitally. And you just, you can you kind of know, I mean, there were some things that were surprising to me, like the, the extinguisher only on one stud there, it, I, I thought it would have a little more clutch and it may be these parts or it may just be that I, I needed to have more than one stud there. But pretty much everything else holds together about as well as I thought it would. And, and the thing is, I mean, the thing is hefty. It's got some pretty good weight to it. I feel like it's, you know, it's fairly durable for the most part. Um, yeah, I don't know. Does that answer your question, Josh? Yes, yeah. So you're trying to figure out, you know, how to move between the digital and physical build and make sure that it'll translate well. Yeah, and I think the main thing there is, you know, building the experience that you have with physical bricks really translates well to uh, to online. And then, of course, there is a learning curve, you know, to learning any, you know, kind of digital platform. Uh, but I really love Studio, and, it, and it's, it's almost, you know, it's different to me. Like, I, I love building with Lego. I love doing, you know, design work like uh, video editing or Photoshop kind of stuff. And I feel like Studio is, like, right in the middle. It's this super awesome combination of, like, creativity. And, and the best thing is you have an, an unlimited parts catalog, right? I, not not for this program. We, we were restricted to certain parts that we could use, but I mean, you don't have to worry about your supply of bricks when you design digitally because you can just, you know, keep grabbing more from the from the little parts bin and uh, and you really explore some, some crazy things that way. Right. The restrictions you mentioned there is something I wanted to ask about because obviously BrickLink had restrictions on what, like, themes you could and could not build in. They had, like, part restrictions, how many pieces it could be. So were you keeping all of that in mind as you kind of chose the model? you wanted to build and then as you were working on the fire truck sort of how it would all come together yeah well so we could not as far as pieces go the software literally had that built in so we had to use the a full design program palette for parts and so that means like we you know we literally could only grab the parts that we were allowed to use and the parts that we weren't allowed to use we didn't have access to and i think basically what that came down to is the uh, the current list of active elements from lego so we we couldn't use parts that lego isn't currently manufacturing um and and uh yeah, I think that answers that question. And then as far as like the themes go, we were we weren't allowed to do anything in a current Lego theme. Uh, so, you know, there's some confusion like Lowenstein Castle is one of the most amazing builds in the whole program. And I don't know that I would have chosen to do a castle because I, I think I might have thought that that was off limits. But apparently they decided that, you know, like right now there's not a currently active like castle theme and people love it and uh, it's obviously doing very well. Um, the fire engine, you know, I'm not sure I would have known if I should build a minifig scale fire engine because obviously there are many of those, you know, all the time. There's always been minifig scale fire engines. Uh, and, and so I felt pretty safe submitting something of a larger scale here. So, you know, let's see, a regular minifigure would look pretty tiny in, in, in this fire engine. Um, yeah, anyway. Not, not quite the scale there. Right. But then another thing I, I wanted to get your thoughts on is kind of your strategy with the program. So did you go all in on just this one build and submit only one design to the ADP? Or did you have multiples and kind of think, well, I'll try to get one of these through? Yeah, this was my first. And when I finished it, there was still a week and a half left to submit. 
but I was pleased with this. I didn't feel like I needed to spend another week and a half, you know, kind of tweaking this design. I felt like I had done that over the about the three and a half weeks that I spent working on this one. So I worked on another one. There was a steampunk rocket ship that I submitted, and and then I submitted the steampunk rocket ship with you know the night before the end of the submission, you know, window, and uh, and I, I went to bed thinking, you know. I, I've got all day tomorrow. I should submit one more. So I, I cranked out like one little sort of like bookends kind of thing. So neither, neither of those were selected, and that's fine. I, you know, I felt like to some degree I just wanted to make every effort that I could to, to, you know, design something that would, you know, be recognized as as a potential for being successful in this program. And I'm I'm perfectly pleased, and it makes sense to me that it's the one that I, you know, spent the most time on. Uh, I also guess it. I, it means that I can trust my instincts a little bit that it also happens to be the one that was the first idea that I attempted to, you know, that I decided to execute. Um, so yeah, there's right. that. And it really is a fantastic model. When John and I were in Billund, for people who saw our coverage of the, the ADP event uh, in, in Billund in Denmark where BrickLink went over and chose the models, uh, we were seeing, we, we didn't know who, who built any of them, but uh, we saw this one and everyone loved it immediately and uh, I think it was definitely uh, a favorite there. So I'm, I'm so glad it, it got through here uh, and I was very pleasantly surprised when I heard that it was your design, which yeah. I thought was really cool. So uh, we should mention once again, if people, if, if you like what you've heard from Boone, like this design, definitely go check it out on the ADP. You can support that and all of the other uh, incredible builds that are there as well. Yeah, and I'll also say like, whether you support the fire engine, if fire engines aren't your thing, please still go to this link and check it out because there might be something else there for you and I want every single one there's 16 designers who were selected and I would love for every single one of them to get funded because when you do that uh, you are supporting someone's dream right and you're helping someone you know move forward in, in making this uh, you know kind of a future in in Lego uh, a reality uh, especially like my buddy Jake Sadovich um, we got to get him funded he designed the ship in a bottle, and he's got a 3D treasure map on the ADP program. And so if you own the ship in a bottle, I feel like it's a no-brainer to me that if you, if the ship in a bottle is, is valuable enough to be in your collection, you should have his 3D treasure map right next to it on your shelf. Uh, so anyway, that's my soapbox about that. But just whether you buy the fire engine or not, please go support somebody in the ADP because it's just a, a wonderful program, I think. There is great stuff there, so we'll make sure to put a link in the description to that. But before we end, I wanted to touch on you know the Boone Langston expanded universe fire engines here. So we have an example of that, and I believe you even have other ideas. So let's talk about the Star Wars one and where you want to take this in the future. Yeah, so... I had this idea when I was accepted into, when I realized that my fire engine was one of the finalists, I started thinking about what I wanted to do with it for this convention, Bricks Cascade. I'm like, okay, I've got to build at least one copy to show at the convention. And I thought, well, what else could I do with it? And I, I just thought, wouldn't it be kind of funny to like recolor it and re rework it to enter in other themes? And I thought, you know, if I could enter it in like four or five or six different themes, uh, that would be like really funny. I actually didn't get around to doing that, uh, but this was the first, you know, sort of alternate reality version of the fire engine that I that I tackled because uh, I got here, I got here on Thursday. And I had told Jacqueline from Bricklink, uh, so I, she, she made a comment on Facebook and I, I had uh, commented to someone else like, you'll see the Star Wars version at, at Bricks Cascade. And then I got here and I didn't have it done and I felt like a liar. So I, I spent like the second night of the con, I stayed up all night and, and built, this, built this version here. Uh, it, these are bigger than minifigs. So, uh, you know, I don't know, that might give you a little bit better idea. You should see my hand, but... These are the LED flashlights, and I just cut the chain, key ring chain off of the top of each of their heads. So we got Darth Vader driving, and for, you know, I thought with this big long bed, I thought it would be hilarious to have it be like a, a stormtrooper troop carrier. So. Yeah, I think it's just a funny twist on it. And then obviously you get the iconic, you know, dark and light gray, big gray Star Wars ship type of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then this one, you know, here I, I still, I put in the 
plate, you know, I was looking at the fire engine instructions and just making modifications as I went. I still put this plate in with the stud on top for the fire extinguisher, but then I, I by the time I got to the end of the build, I hadn't thought of like what I would put there. So, you know, if you have any ideas, you could put it in the comments of this video of what I should put there. I also, this, you know, on the original fire engine, there's this uh, printed brick with a star and a brick and some gold on there. Um, and, and then over here, it's blank. And so I actually think I want to try to find a sticker that has like the Imperial logo on it and stick that there. I've also, I've been collecting parts. You'll have to watch in the future. I've been collecting parts for, uh, I've got a bunch of parts that are ready to build a, a classic space. Uh, you know, blue and gray uh, with, you know, transparent yellow. So I'm going to do one in that. I've got a bunch of black uh, for a Batman version of the, the fire engine. Um, it, you know, it's got a lot of, it's got some brown and a lot of pearl gold. So it wouldn't take much to turn this into a steampunk build. I think basically replacing like a lot of the red with brown and then putting, I, I think like some sort of big like boiling kettle back here with like smoke coming out and, you know, I don't know what else. Uh, maybe like some big like lenses up here for, I don't know. So I think maybe a steampunk version will be coming in the future. You know, I may never get to any of those, but it's fun to think about, and I've certainly spent enough money on the parts. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's the ideas, right? Yeah, oh, I love the ideas. And that's my motto. I, uh, I, I don't guarantee every single one will be good, but I always guarantee I will have more ideas. There you go. And with that, I think that's a fitting end to this wonderful build. So once again, look for description or look for a link in the description to, to support this and all the other great builds on the AFOL Designer program on Bricklink. Lots of cool builds there done by some really talented uh, AFOLs. So definitely check those out. Thank you, Boone. Thanks for the hard work you put into this. Congratulations once again on getting this through. Uh, and getting the funding, I, I think it's so amazing. So can't wait to see where it goes in the future. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, if you like any of those designs, buy them now because they're gonna they're gonna be gone after June.